Okay, so Morris dancing is, as the name suggests, a type of dancing, but it's not dancing as we know it. It's not the type of thing you'd imagine when, I don't know, ballroom dancing or even the hip-hop stuff that people have today. It was an English dance, but a very contained English dance in only certain areas. It was mainly in the cheese-eating villages of the Northeast, where really there was just pastures, so it wasn't a big deal. It was protected by all that greenery and the cows. And we would just dance, like, all day. All day. i maybe get a couple hours of sleep tops. My legs was going out. I was like... I think I, 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 think I, I, I broke my ankle at one point. Anything that takes over your life to the point where you aren't in the present and communicating with your friends and family, uh, it has to be stopped. Addicts call it by a lot of names. You get MD, Riding Rudolph, Jingle Bells, Jangly Pocket, or Tripping in the Cheese Village. I'm going to say sophomore, junior year of high school. Um, some kids were, we were just had like a, a kickback, you know, um, and people were getting tired of just like, you know, the same old music, the same old alcohol, and they're bored, and they're like, they heard about this new thing, it's called MD, and I was like, oh, what's that, and he's like, oh, it's Morris Dance, and I was like, okay, and then he, he put the track on, you know, in the stereo, it was hot, it was hot, and I tried it out, and, you know, people say that the heroin is like the one hitter quitter drug where you do it and you're locked in for life but this is no joke like from the get-go I was just hooked and I continued to Morris dance for about four more years until I could break the habit well, people often liken it to drugs but it's not quite the same because it's far more accessible it's far more easier to get addicted to and they really aren't the type of limitations which you face anyone can get this I mean of course one of the big phenomenons when the breakout really started was at Christmas when you had all those bells available on sleighs and in Santa displays and that's when it really reached the children because all they simply had to do was walk into a shop and just pick them off the street and then attach them to their shoes and the next thing you know it's got them you know I started Mothers Against Morris dancing because it took away my son's reason for creative living. He was so obsessed. I cut class, I dropped out of high school. That baby that my mom was holding, that's my baby. I had him because I was at some Morris dance party. I was, it was crazy. I don't know what happened, but next thing you know, I got a little, little baby Gregory over there. This is a public nuisance, and uh, these kids need to get off the street. And it's not only the, the rhythm that's addicting, but it's the music that's, you know, infecting our children's lives. You see them in corners on the sides of the streets, dressed in frilly outfits, green and red and bells. Especially at nighttime, they come out, all the dancers, you hear the music, you see the kids, you want to do it, you know, just like everyone else. And there's nothing more rewarding after a crappy day at some low paying, part time job than, you know, to be able to get a couple two steps in. This isn't something that you can easily deal with. It gets hold of you, and once you've got it, you can't really just shake it off or, or get easy treatment. This is something that's in the mind, and it's in the mind of our very society. It's spreading through the entire basis of what we know. And if it does that, if the pandemic really spreads, if it grips us, then I don't quite know how we're going to get it off. How are we going to make it let go? Is this just going to be what we become? Morris dancers? I know for the long run, my life, my body, my health, for my family, because I have my son now, um, that's not the way to go. So I just got to keep that in mind. It's tough, though.